Hello, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm so glad I got through. You um I literally um am pretty much on boundaries at me like every day listening to some course. How are you like very it? thankful for for you. I really like love it. I'm I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. Now have you joined any I'm of the good. groups and are you talking to people, any of the any of the groups that are going on there? Yes, yeah, so I do use the Facebook group and um yeah, everything is just so cool. cohesive. Like I'm also reading the boundaries book, uh, the audio book, and it, everything is just blending. It, oh, yeah, great! It's, it's well, I'm glad. I'm glad because you know we do have you booked to do the show for me later in the week, and I want you to have all that stuff read before you host the show. You know, you got to be ready. <laughs> or not? Oh. Okay. What What is your question? <laughs> What's your question? Um, so, um, just in doing, uh, just some reflection lately, I've really, um, come to understand that, like, I really desire attention from people. Um, and so when I don't get that attention, um, or like affirmation, and it can be from anyone, but it's mostly from those who are closest to me, then my mind will get distracted with what they're doing. So like, I don't want to use the word obsessed because I think that's very powerful, but I will, I will, my mind will literally start to form all types of scenarios um, about who they're with. And like, you know, Mm. I have a history Mm -hmm. of like kind of a little possessiveness and jealousy with friends. And so, um, yeah. And so I guess my question is, I know, um, you know, if I can't, I can't, one person or even people in general can't always give me attention. And so I know that has to be filled by God ultimately. So how, well, let, how is that? Well, well, like, yes and no. Yes and no. God, you know, everybody, as Pascal said, has a God shaped vacuum in them that only God can fill. But everybody has a people shaped vacuum in them as well that only people can fill and God can't fill. And you hear that a lot of times. People in the church say, well, you know, you got to let God meet all your needs. Well, that's not true. That's not what the Bible says at all. We do need human attention. We need human love. Now, what we don't need is for that that feeling that we are um, worthy of attention and lovable and connected and safe and secure and all that. We don't need to have that threatened every time somebody doesn't, you know, pay us exactly the attention that we want. So, I want you to value your need for attention, not judge it. Okay. That's a good thing. Well, we mm-hmm. have to, what we have to ask is why is it always so at risk? Why does it feel so vulnerable that if somebody's not attending to you, that you're unloved or that you're preferred somebody, they're preferring somebody else. So where it, have you ever wondered, why do I feel this way? Um, yeah, I really think it might be, um, cause honestly, the, I have memories from, um, like fourth grade when like I had a friend, um, a really close friend and I saw her like talk to someone else and I wasn't there. So in that moment I felt kind of rejected. And so I think when I, when I don't have attention and someone else has that person's attention, then I yeah. just feel like. Something bad, I guess, something in that bad's moment. Happen. So, so what have you done about this? Right. It, it, what have you done to resolve this, or are you just now kind of starting to look at it? Well, um, I feel like I don't really know what to do because, I mean, I bought it. I, I see the, and I mean, it's fairly new revelation, but um, like I, I do have a counselor, and I think it, my initially I thought the issue was jealousy which I think it kind of is a fruit of that. But, um, well, what, is, what does your counselor say about it? I don't know how to get so. what, what does your um, counselor say well, about it? Um, well, she was saying um, that I need to un- understand like that I'm value- valued and loved. And um, pretty much what you were saying, I think it comes to like a self-worth. Like, why do you feel like, if you don't have someone's attention all the time that you don't feel like 
valued or loved, and I really don't know. Okay. Um, well, let, let, let me give you a few things that, that you might might want to go talk about. What does your sibling scenario look like? What in you have siblings near your age? So um, there are six of us. I grew up with five of uh, with five of them or four of them. And, sorry. And, and, and any um, of them close close I'm to the, your age? On like ever like within um, a couple a year or I two to your age? Pretty close. Okay. Sometimes yeah. now here's here's what I want you to go go ask yourself. There's a difference diagnostically. There's a difference diagnostically in the root issue of this in at least three different scenarios. All right. And here's what I want you to go. Um, I want you to kind of watch yourself and observe this. And is do you you feel like this happens? just one-on-one -on -one. like you just one-on-one -on -one relationship nobody else on the radar just you and a close friend or whatever and let's say they get busy or they're doing something or working on something they're not exactly paying attention to you do you feel it in that scenario or do you feel it when there's somebody's attention that you want and then they're talking to a third party so there's got to kind of be three people you and the person and then somebody feels like they they turn to them instead of you that's the second scenario or is the third one does it have to do with you feeling like you've made some mistake or not done something good enough and that's why you're losing their attention can you relate to any one of those more than the other the second one for sure the second the okay and that's that's kind of why i ask you about siblings Okay. Now, sometimes, sometimes what happens is, I mean, it's, it's nothing bad. A lot of times, sometimes there's just, there's just, there's too many, too many mouths to feed for, you know, how much attention like a parent or somebody has to give to somebody. And, and they're always kind of like, you know, I had you and now I lost you. Sometimes it can happen. Sometimes it can happen with, with the parental diet or triad. You know that that one you sort of lose lose a parent to the other one, and and the kid feels abandonment. But but developmentally, what we always look for in a scenario like this is is this what we call dyadic or triadic? So dyadic that means dyadic. A two dyad you and another sounds like you feel pretty secure in your attachments and people love you, until there's a triangle. And when somebody else comes in, right. that's where you start to kind of doubt your your desirability, if you will, or your wantability. Right? Yes, exactly. Okay, so good. Now we might have some awareness about what the real issue is, right? It's about losing somebody's love to another person. Now, here's what I would want you to go talk to your counselor about. I wonder where I learned that if some if somebody that loves me also loves somebody else and that they have more than one friend or more than one relative or more than one you know team member or whatever it is that i'm out in the cold where did i learn to interpret that way and kind of look exactly. at exactly exactly and then not only that then here's what i would like here's what i'd love for you to do hmm. do you have two friends that are friends with each other Yes, and I get jealous. Okay, I good. I recently good. had like an event good. that happened, and that happened. Okay, good. You got, yeah. but they're they're friends with each other too, and they both love you. Yes. Okay. Now I don't know if this is safe or not because I don't know them, but I would love for you to to be with the two of them and say, "Okay, guys, I gotta confess something to you. I kind of have this thing. It's nothing y'all are doing. You're just being normal, whatever." I kind of have this thing where I feel like if y'all are doing something together and I'm not there, I feel like nobody likes me. I feel like, you know, I lost one of you or whatever. And it's this weird thing about, I can't, I can't like know that I'm still secure in my friendships. And so, you know, you guys just remind me if y'all are going off to do something, you still like me and just kind of make it. Cause I'd like for you to see you have some, another way you can do this is in a group. But I'd like to see you have some experiences in triads, triangles, where you learn love doesn't go away when it looks the other way. 
did I just make up a country and Western song? Love doesn't go away when it looks the other way. Now I want you to get that little sentence in your head. That's not bad. We should write this down. And remember that yeah, when I'm one of your friends, that. yeah, when somebody does something, you know, whatever, tell yourself, love doesn't go away when it looks away. And start to just be aware of this and start to get different voices in your head internally that are telling yourself, no, it's fine. It's fine. Just like a kid's got to learn. Mommy still exists when she goes in the other room. She hasn't disappeared. She's still there. And you're going to learn that. And also in real life, when you're in a safe group that doesn't do the divisive thing, then you're going to learn that too. But you got to make it conscious in order to do it. Okay. That's kind of all the time I have on this. Um, but it's a great question. A lot of people experience this. It is a normal developmental phase. We all have to negotiate. Some people kind of get stuck for whatever reason. But the way you talk about it and your awareness, um, I think you're going to figure this out. So I hope that's helpful to you. Yes. And then, I'm sorry. I know you ran out of time. Is there any courses on boundaries.me that kind of also talks about this? You know what? Um, I'm going to ask my team to uh, to let me know. I don't know, but you know what? There's going to be because I'm going to put one on there. One of the things about boundaries.me, and I'll tell everybody this, is when you're a subscriber, subscriber, we listen to you, and I'm always adding new new content, always adding new new stuff. And actually, Jessica just um, texted me back, and she said, "Yes, there is." So. Um, I don't oh, know if they okay. can do this, but maybe they have a way to get in touch with you or she can tell me which one or we'll post it or something, but we'll do that. Okay. okay. Thank you to Cora for listening. your call. Thank you. Very, very, very helpful to talk to you today. You know what? I'm going to talk about that um, for one second. And that is um, there is a difference. Here's three things for all of you psychologically minded you know there's so many people in our audience that are really into the i love it you're really into the technical the dynamics and how stuff works okay here's three things to go chew on there's a difference in a an abandonment fear or sensitivity which is the fear that we might lose the person that loves us by rejection or abandonment or they move away, that love isn't secure, that it's gonna go away. We have insecure attachments, that's one. But it's a different problem when my attachment is fine if it weren't for this other person. That's when we get into, it's not really abandonment, it's that, it's that triadic jealousy, right? And then you get competitive. You're competing with that other person, for this person's attention. That's why a lot of times, you know, in affairs or, or uh, what's the word I'm looking for, kind of um, threatened affairs or, you know, uh, uh, what's the word? Affairs not happening, but it looks like it just suspected or, or whatever. That's why this can be so devastating to some people more than others even. And they they react to it in ways that, like aren't helpful because that deep loss of loss of somebody to somebody else gets triggered. And there's a difference in that jealousy, which involves a third party. There's a difference in that and envy, which is envy doesn't mean I'm afraid of losing the one that loves me to you. That's jealousy. Envy is I just want what you have. I'm not jealous of your new car because if I had it, you know, my wife would like me better. No. I'm just envious of your new car because I've defined the good as that which I don't have. And you got it and I want it. So I'm envious. Those are different. Go think about that. You might find out the crummy feelings you have can get more specific when you understand them. And that's one of the things we try to do on this show. We try to do that on boundaries.me. We try to do it in the forums. Let's find out, you know, my anger, my abandonment, my sadness, that's a signal that there's an issue. But let's find out what the issue is underneath it.